In this video, we're going to take a look at another part of the Oracle database called a table space. And a table space is something called a logical structure inside your Oracle database, which means it doesn't really have a physical component. It's something that's used to organize the different data files that are on your system. And as an example, I'm going to use my pad here. We'll talk about table spaces. And as an example, I'm going to do my usual hideous kind of drawing here, if I can sort of do this. And those of you who are geography majors, that's my failed attempt at drawing the United States. It's a little, <laughs> it's not exactly to scale, but uh, just a way of, of organizing this. Hopefully you guys will, will recognize that. And one of the things I use to explain table spaces is the concept of time zones in the US. For those of you who are not familiar with the United States, we have four time zones here. And they're broken into pretty much four parts of the country. They're not exactly, I'm not drawing it exactly correct. You know, they're, they're kind of in different spots like this. And this is, you know, East Coast time, so that's Eastern time, this is called Central time, this is called Mountain time, and this is called Pacific time. There's nothing physical on the states or anything in the United States that should divide it this way. It's just a logical way of representing the different time zones in the United States. And, you know, we do this for a very good reason. Obviously, if we didn't have the concept of time zones and everybody was under the, the same time, you know, when it was um, 7 a.m. here on the East Coast and little kids were going to school, it would be obviously pitch black here on the Pacific Coast where, you know, California little kids would be going to school in the pitch black. So it doesn't make any sense just to have a, a single time for the entire United States. We want to break this into these logical divisions here, and we just organize them by the different times, so that when it's you know 7 a.m. on the East Coast, it's 6 a.m. in Chicago, and it's 5 a.m. in Denver, and it's 4 a.m. in California. And that makes perfect sense to kind of logically break things up that way. In the same vein, inside of an Oracle database, we're going to have all of our data files, and we're going to organize those data files by table spaces. So kind of the same concept that's here. Let me open up uh, a fresh window. And I'm still getting used to my pointer here, so I'm still a little rusty at it. So in the same concept, we'll have these data files that make up our Oracle database. Oh, I'll reset my color on me. I hate when it does that. I'll have these data files and oh boy, that's that's some rough drawing there. My handwriting has really gotten poor in the last couple of years. So I'll have these data files that are out there and you know they could be on different disks and everything like that. So we'll have data file three this guy will be data file 2. This guy will be data file 1. And then what I can do is that I can then kind of organize all of these together and say, you know what, I'm going to treat all three of these data files as a logical thing. And the logical thing is a table space. And I might call this, you know, table space users. And then I can manipulate these three data files all in one shot. It makes the administration of my database a heck of a lot easier. What would I want to do at the table space level that I wouldn't want to do you know, at an individual data file level? Well, I may want to take them offline. I may want to make them read only. I may want to, uh, when we get into backup and recovery, I may want to uh, do a hot backup on my database and being able to take these data files offline while I back them up and then restore them and then you know turn them back online again after my backup is finished 
makes it a lot easier for me as a DBA to kind of monitor my database and do things like backup and recovery. So a table space is just kind of a logical way of grouping together these different data files. They might all be on the same disk. They might be on different physical disks. I have a lot of flexibility in terms of, of what I want to do there. So to give you a demonstration of this, I'm going to hop back into SQL Developer. And this is a tool I've been using up to this point to kind of show you all of the different things that, are, that you can do with an Oracle database. SQL Developer wasn't really developed to do DBA type activities. So uh, I can do the typical things that I would do as a developer where I log into my database. You know, I can create tables, I can create views, I can uh, modify indexes, I can create packages and procedures, a whole bunch of different things inside a SQL developer. But it wasn't really intended to do DBA type work. But as the tool became more and more popular, people started saying, hey, I really like this. Is there any way that maybe we could start doing DBA work? So it doesn't show up as a default. You have to go into View, and under View, you'll see that there's this DBA with a plug next to it. And if I specify that, it'll take my existing connection, and then it'll give me some DBA type things that I can do in my database. Uh, I can look at my database configuration, all the different files, my initialization parameters, uh, the resource manager. I can set up uh, security rules. I'm going to look at storage right now. And if I click on storage, I can see all of the physical things that make up my Oracle database. So stuff like archive logs, control files. I also have the ability to see the logical ways that the data files are represented. And this is under table spaces. So if I click on table spaces and click on the plus sign here, It'll bring up all the different table spaces that are on my system. So you can see I have all of these different table spaces, OTS, BTTAR, store, users, temp, a whole bunch of these table spaces that are unique to the uh, Oracle WebLogic server. So you can see that there's a lot of different table spaces that are out there. If you're working with the uh, Oracle eBusiness Suite, one of the logical ways that uh, information is separated is by modules. So you'll see things like uh, an AR table space, an AR index table space uh, for accounts receivable, PO for uh, purchase orders and stuff like that. So I'm going to click on the users table space here. And this will come back in a minute. And this should give me information about the users table space. So as you can see, here are all of the different attributes that go along with my particular user's table space. And you don't have to worry about all of these right now, but just know this is a place that you can see a lot of that different different pieces of information. So under Actions, I can then do more things that are associated with a table space. And this, this list includes some of the usual things that a typical DBA would do, where they might add a data file to a table space. There's a, a one-to-many relationship in, in uh, um, table spaces to data files. The example that I drew a second ago, the one table space had three data files associated with it. You can have a, a one-to-many data files that are associated with a particular data um, with a table space. Uh, I can change the read state. So if I have a table space that I just want to make read only and I don't want to give anybody the ability to go in there and update information. This is really nice for people who organize their data inside their organizations by let's say month and they want to close out the month. They don't want anybody going in and updating any transactions that happened in the previous month. They have to do accounting things. You can change the read state for a table space that will say anything that's part of that table space is now in read-only mode so that nobody can actually go in there and update any information. I'm going to click on the Edit link here, and we're going to see all of the different things that we can do with a, a table space. Here are some of the properties. Uh, the management type can either be local or dictionary. Uh, the older versions of the Oracle database, all of the information that was in a table space was stored in something called a system table space. And as databases got bigger and bigger, this became a very inefficient way of every time something had to happen in a particular data file, you had to go back to the system table space to get information about that data file and then say, OK, do I have enough room to uh, update this information? How am I going to store the information inside the, the, the um, data files inside that table space? Um, Oracle really doesn't use that much anymore. Uh, most modern databases use what's called local management type, which means the information is stored in the data files that make up that table space uh, for all of the different things that are there. Uh, we can allocate different um, um, pieces of the actual data files for our extents. So uh, here um, we're selecting Auto Allocate. But if we were to turn that off, we can actually say, OK, for everything that's going to be created inside this particular data file, I want to have an initial extent, which means just an allocation of disk space 
for this size. I want to have an initial extent of, let's say, 1 meg. So as soon as I create the table, as soon as the first time I go to insert a record into that table, alloc Oracle allocates a meg of space inside the data file for that extent. Even if I'm only inserting a tiny little piece, it just makes disk maintenance a heck of a lot easier. Uh, Oracle has some really sophisticated algorithms in the latest versions of their database, so uh, a lot of times uh, DBAs will choose to auto-allocate space, and Oracle is very efficient at doing that. But if you need greater control over how uh, the information is stored inside your data files, you can take this off and specify all of the different fields that are out there. If I click on File Specifications, I'll see the actual data files that make up this table space. In this example, my users table space, there's one data file. There's a data file out there called users01.dbf, and that's the directory, the physical directory that it's stored on my disk. Uh, the initial file size when it was created was 6400K, which is about 6 uh, megabytes. I can also turn on something called Auto Extend, which says, okay, as this guy starts to fill up, I want him to keep increasing in size. I don't want, uh, I never want to run out of space inside my data files. I can specify how big this data file should ever get. Uh, I can say, I can put a, an upper limit on that to say never make it bigger than that. If I check unlimited, then the file obviously will just keep extending itself until we fill up the uh, the file system. So. But I have the ability to go in there and add additional data files uh, to my system. And again, just like all of the other wizards that are inside of SQL Developer, I have the ability to see the code that will be generated. I haven't made any changes to this guy. But if I want to change that, let's say I don't want the next size to be 160. I want it to be 200. And I'm going to make that meg. If I look under DDL, now you'll see that I will be updating that information. But for the table space users, I can't do that because that's one of the system table spaces that's out there. So I can't actually make a change to the user's table space. But if I had changed these around, I'd be able to look at the, uh, the DDL, the data definition language, and see uh, what was created for me. So again, a table space is just a logical way of kind of grouping all of the data files together inside your system. And as we look at some of the uh, additional videos coming up, we're going to see why this is important at the DBA level, why we want to actually go in there and have this kind of control over the different data files.